internal noise as in the last lecture we have seen external noise in communication system and its sources next is low frequency noise they are also known as flicker noise and this flicker noise are generally observed at a frequency range below few kilohertz so at lower frequency range the flicker noise occur power spectral density of these noise increases with the decrease in frequency means if the uh, the signal is of very low frequency then the flicker noise will be of greater amount now high frequency noise high frequency noise are also known as transit time noise and they are observed in the semiconductor devices and when they are observed when the transit time of a charge carrier while crossing a junction is compared with the time period of that signal so the transit time um, noise they occur in the semiconducting devices and they occur when the carrier while crossing a junction is compared with the time period of that signal and the most important internal noise that has to be considered a lot that is known as thermal noise this is thermal noise it is also known as white noise or junction noise junction is the person who has invented the thermal noise and white noise because it is uh, having all the frequencies since we know that the white color is composed by all the colors in the same way the thermal noise are random and they are um, they can be considered they have to checkered at all frequencies so that that are also known, known as white noise and they are generally observed in the resistor or a resistive components of a complex impedance due to random and rapid movement of the molecules or atoms or electrons we know that at a certain temperature there are a movement of molecules or electrons or charges and those movements are random in nature and due to those a uh, random movement of the molecules or atoms or electrons there is a generation of thermal noise now let us understand the mathematical part of thermal noise which has to be considered a lot now if we are tackling with the maximum noise power output across the resistor if we are taking a resistor in a circuitry and the maximum noise has to be calculated then the noise power is directly proportional to t into b what is t that is the absolute temperature and what is b b is the bandwidth of the signal or in which bandwidth range the signal has to be transmitted so the noise power is equal to k into t into b where k is the boltzmann constant and its value is given here okay so this is the formula of maximum noise power across a resistor and the resultant noise if there are many resistor means in a network in a resistive network where there are many different resistors r1 r2 r3 so the resultant noise will become this 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 is uh, the noise is also a form of voltage signal so here is the indication of voltage n for noise and r for resultant so voltage noise resultant noise voltage is equal to under root 4k t b r and this r is the practical Resistive means a net resistance across that the resistive network. If the resistance uh, are parallelly connected, 
because we have just seen that in the past there are the distribution of current across each register so if they are parallelly connected then the net resistance formula is 1 by equivalent resistance r or that is a practical resistance is equal to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 plus so on so this v and r is equal to under root 4 k t d and this is the net value of the resistance of the electrical circuit so this will give us the resultant noise now power density spectrum power density spectrum here it is indicated as si omega since this is the frequency domain formula it is not in time domain it is in frequency domain it is a function of frequency so spectrum or this is this shows the power density so it is equal to 2k tg four divided by 1 plus omega by alpha whole square. What is T? Ambient temperature in Kelvin. G is the conductance of register in Mo. K is Boltzmann constant and alpha is the average number of collisions per second per electron. Generally for diploma students you have to remember the formula of maximum noise power output across a register and the resultant noise in a in an electrical network okay and this may should be uh, uh, this may be learned also the formula for power density spectrum and this power is going to contribute the current contributing the thermal noise means that much power will be um, across the will be um, consumed by the thermal noise okay so this was the mathematical part of the uh, noise that has to be since these are the internal noise and the internal noise are totally dependent on the circuit parameters so the circuit parameters are known to the um, who the students the experimenters uh, the persons who are working on the, the those circuits so these uh, by using these formulas we can evaluate the noise value and accordingly we can eliminate we can try to eliminate the noise in the circuit now thermal noise can be considered to contain all frequency noise that's why it is known as white noise okay so this was about the internal noise now let us understand let us understand the noise temperature what is noise temperature in a communication system let us understand the concept of noise figure here the concept of noise figure it is frequently used when dealing with ultra high frequency when we are dealing with the ultra high frequency and microwave low noise antennas receivers or devices then we have to consider noise temperature noise temperature in communication system they are uh, they are derived in very early stages of uh, radio communication and they are extensively used for antennas and low noise microwave amplifiers so what is noise temperature noise temperature is considered as a concept of noise figure and it is not only uh, noise figure is not only always the most convenient measure of noise and what is noise figure here I have not given the formula but I am telling you noise figure is nothing but the ratio of signal to noise ratio at the input of the receiver divided by signal to noise ratio at the output of the receiver 
in earlier lecture uh, we may have seen that one formula similar to that but that that was totally reciprocal which was known as figure of merit figure of merit was emphasized to uh, watch the signal amount which is boosted up at the end of the receiver but here in noise figure since it is just reciprocal it is signal to noise ratio at the input of the receiver divided by signal to noise ratio at the output of the receiver just reciprocal of the formula of figure of merit so what it performs here when we consider noise figure formula noise figure tells how much signal has been deteriorated at the end of the receiver so uh, when we uh, tackle with noise figure means we have to take the noise part means noise uh, is uh, noise how noise affects the signal and when we take figure of merit at that time we have to consider the signal part what useful signal we are receiving at the end of the um uh, receiver okay and noise temperature is the ju uh, just opposite thing it it is uh, better to uh, tackle noise temperature where the noise figure is not relevantly giving the measures of noise in next lectures here i have given the field where the noise uh, noise temperature has to be tackled but in the next lecture i will tell you how it has to be calculated okay so for antennas and low noise microwave amplifiers noise temperature has to be taken in account now uh, before uh, studying the more details of noise and its effect in frequency domain let us understand the basic concepts of signal in frequency domain and time domain see in the left side there is a time domain representation of a signal of 1 kilohertz and in a frequency domain this is the uh, frequency domain representation of a signal 1 kilohertz in time domain we take time in the x axis while in frequency domain in the x axis we are taking the frequency so for different frequency values we are showing the amplitude by vertical lines while in time domain any wave is shown by this complete wave form in which uh, a half wave is for half time period and the next half cycle is for the uh, next time period and this time period is the reciprocal of frequency okay so this is the um, simultaneous study uh, of frequency domain and time domain now if we have doubled the frequency what we are watching that in the same time duration we are getting the double wave form earlier there were three half cycles now we are having six half cycles and as the frequency is doubled time period is reduced but in frequency domain if the same signal of 2 kilohertz is representing in the frequency domain only by the vertical line at the frequency in uh, frequency point we have to show the signal only whatever be the amplitude okay now i think now the students who are not very much aware of time domain and uh, frequency domain by watching this uh, two graphs they will be aware of these values now see here there is a time domain diagram where the frequency of original signal may be 1 kilohertz but the noise of certain frequency corrupts the signal unknown so here what we are watching the signal is of 1 kilohertz frequency so accordingly th this is the time period from this point from this point to this point this is the time period but what we are watching here these are the noise effects these are high frequency component of noise which are disturbing the amplitude of the signal so in the time domain we can see the effect of signal while in the frequency domain how we will watch it in the effect of uh, noise in frequency domain like that 
इफ यू विल मैथमेटिकली सॉल्व द टाइम डिवेन इक्वेशन दीज विल बी द हारमोनिक्स 